Okay, LED lighting. Um, obviously with energy costs soaring and so on, everybody's looking for ways to save money on their electricity bill. So I thought I'd try some of these LED lamps. Now I bought these on eBay, they were shipped from China. This is one of them. It's, a, it's got 108 LEDs in a cluster that they call a corn cob, you can see why, around a plastic body. There's a small Edison screw fitting there because that was I bought the ones for my ceiling lamp in the lounge. I'm going to have a look at what's inside these later on, but uh, in a minute we'll just do a test of what they look like first. But what can we say about this device? It's the build quality doesn't doesn't actually seem brilliant. The uh, the screw thread's actually wonky. The screw thread is not aligned with the axis of the device, which doesn't bode well. Um, anyway, there's 108 LEDs. They are standard epoxy encapsulated white LEDs. They're, they're little stubby ones though, they're half height. Um, I've got here, that's the UK version. This is the USA version. Um, so don't ask me why I've got both, it's a long story. Let's have a look. There's actually no difference between the two, except, oddly, the USA version has got the CE logo on it and the UK one has not. I'm assuming that the insides will be different, so I'm going to keep that one separate. Anyway, let's go and have a look and see what sort of light they produce. Okay, this is a comparison of the LED lamp against a 7 watt compact fluorescent. As you can see, actually, there's not an awful lot of difference in the uh, total light output between the two. The, uh, the compact fluorescent, the light is, a, you can't probably see this on the digital camera, but the light is a bit more of an orangey warm colour, whereas the LED lamp, the, the, well, the light's a peculiar sort of greeny yellow colour almost. Anyway, that's the two different lamps. We're going to have a look in a minute and see. I don't know if you can tell, but this one's probably, this one's flickering. This one is not so much of a noticeable flicker. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. Anyway, we'll go and have a look and see what's inside the LED one in a minute. Okay, so that's what the light was like, and uh, I actually couldn't get on with it. I found that it was too harsh to look at, and after about a week of use, the, the light output dimmed down to half of what it was originally. And it was a weird kind of uh, greenish yellow light that I found just didn't illuminate the room properly. The, the lights themselves looked really bright in the fitting, but when, when you looked at an, an object that was red or green, it just looked like it wasn't being lit properly. So it was the most peculiar thing. I suspect it's probably because these, these LEDs have, a, very, have a, a couple of very narrow spectral peaks, so they're probably producing a lot of very blue light and a lot of very yellow light. And to our eyes, that light looks white, but when you shine that light on something green or red, it doesn't illuminate it, it's just absorbed. I'm not going to keep these because I, didn't, I just didn't get on with them, so I'm going to see what's inside. So I'll just, that looks like the end, oh, that comes off rather easily there, the um, plastic end cap. Okay, let's have a look, and there's a whole bunch of wires inside there, and these side panels here just slide out. Okay, so what have we got? The other thing to say is that um, when these, these were in operation there was a conspicuous smell of electrical burning which <laughs> would I, I don't take as a good sign of um, that an electrical device is working properly unless it's a toaster or something like that and then it should be a Smell of burning toast, not electrics. Right, what have we got? So, let's have a look. There's a little circuit board here. And there's a circular PCB with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 LEDs on it. And then there are a bunch of other ones with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 LEDs on it. So there are Six boards with six, 16 LEDs and one with 12. I think that makes 108. Let's have a look at how the LEDs are wired. Right, on each circuit board, each of the long circuit boards, the LEDs are wired in simple series. On the end circuit board, again, it looks like they're wired in series, 
and then there's there's a there's a, a wire that goes to the middle so it's running one half of them and then the other half of them so that's probably split into two separate little circuits there soldering quality not brilliant right so that's just going to get in the way so I'm, I'm not going to use this again so I'm cutting that off okay uh, we'll talk about the packaging separately in a minute but as you can see look when when I roll that you can see the you can see the the screw thread just isn't aligned with the plastic body it's quite laughable anyway so on here I've got four little diodes can't really see what number is on them a huge resistor a couple of smaller resistors that's a metal film capacitor, I would say, and that's a electrolytic capacitor, 4.7 microfarads. So, if we can have a look at that, that's where the supply comes in. Um, okay, I'm going to spend a little bit of time working out what this circuit is, and I'll draw it up, and then that will appear on the screen about now. So, um, what we've got is a bridge rectifier and then electrolytic capacitor and a resistor across the middle of the bridge rectifier to do a waveform smoothing and then on the input there's a metal film capacitor and a resistor um, so that the the supply is capacitively coupled to the to the device uh, I believe that's to limit the current and then this huge resistor is attached to the common output leg of the LEDs And then, so that goes around two separate little strings of LEDs. It goes, it goes, goes off to, to one board, and then it splits into two pieces, which then rejoin on the other board. So there are 54 LEDs, two two parallel strings of 54 LEDs in series, if that makes sense. So that's what's inside the UK version. It's actually not very brilliant, is it? Really, I mean, that's a and that still smells of burning, that, that little um, circuit board. So, so the American version. This is should be made for 110 volts. The looks like the screw thread went on a bit a bit more straight in this version. And that, that came off disturbingly easily. A slightly different PCB there, look, that's um, obviously not made in the same factory. And looks like these LEDs are glued in as well. Yeah, this one's just generally a bit sounder build. The plastic casing is exactly the same. Now, are we going to get these PCBs out? I'm not sure we are. Nice, we will. Okay. I don't have to worry too much about destroying this device because I don't intend to use it. And it was cheap as chips anyway, so. Okay, so, blimey. Okay, well, in here we've got more or less the same arrangement, except that the components, there's a lot of surface mount components in here, so that component there I would say is probably a bridge rectifier um, packaged. And then some of these little things here are probably resistors. Um, there's no great big output resistor on the on the output, but then this was designed to run on 110 volts instead of 240. Um, so it's not exactly the same inside. I would say that's probably a simpler circuit, but it's doing much the same thing. It's it's got a bit of smoothing. It's got a um, capacitive coupling to the supply. It's got a bridge rectifier and a couple of diodes in there. Um, I'm given to believe that this is not the optimal way to drive LEDs. Interestingly, the circuit boards on here, what is, let's see what we've got. So, these go, hmm, yeah, they're still in series with 
they've just got a different arrangement of, of LEDs here, but they're, they're still essentially, it's a big series loop. I've no idea why they've actually arranged it in such a peculiar fashion like this. So I don't know whether that's a better way of arranging these, these things or not, but um, anyway, so that's what's inside one of these LED lamps. The overall quality of these devices is, is not brilliant, um, I would say. So, what conclusion are we going to draw from this experience? Well, for one thing, I just didn't like the light quality um, with these bulbs. It was unnatural coloured light um, when it was switched on. It just didn't seem to illuminate things properly, even though the bulbs themselves appeared, appeared very bright. It, the colour of the light was just weird and, and made everything look strange. After a week, they lost half their brightness, probably because the LEDs are being driven way beyond their tolerance or something like that, or, or they're perhaps just inferior quality anyway and, and don't have the lifetime they should. Um, for me, something that I'm going to plug in to the mains electricity and leave switched on all day, um, well for one thing I think it needs to be engineered a bit better than that and perhaps more importantly it shouldn't smell like it's just about to explode. Um, that's really the, the, the problem for me, I think, with, with these units. They're, um, I think they're a safety hazard. I'm, I would be concerned that this was going to catch fire and burn down my house. I'm sure these will sell like hotcakes because they're so cheap. This cost me £3 to get shipped from China. Um, and it's supposedly a 5 watt unit providing the elimination of a... Um, 60, 70 watt bulb. So that's what people want for their home lighting. Unfortunately, this it, do, it doesn't do what it says, but it's so cheap, they'll sell by the thousands. Um, but I certainly won't be buying any more of these for my home. I've gone back to compact fluorescence now for most of my home lighting. So anyway, I hope that's been an interesting and useful video. I've certainly learned a thing or two along the way. Um, and perhaps learn my lesson. Anyway, check out my website, atomicshrimp.com. Thanks then, bye.